everyone, welcome to my spoiler review for Furious 7, the best entry in the franchise yet. Now, if you haven't yet seen Furious 7, you can click here to watch my non-spoiler review and then come back to this party after you have seen the movie. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, come on, Grace, what kind of spoilers could there possibly be for Furious 7? But I'm telling you, there are plenty, because we're going to discuss the film's copious action sequences in detail, as well as how they handle Paul Walker. So you've been warned. This is your last chance to avoid spoilers. Still here? Okay, let's begin. And as always, there are chapter times noted in the video description. And that's so if there's a specific part of the film you just can't wait to discuss, you can skip directly to that part of the video. But I want to start with Paul Walker, because while I said this is the best entry in the franchise yet, it's still largely going to be known not only as Paul Walker's final entry in the franchise, but also his final film, period. And I think they handle that incredibly well. Now, at the end of the film, Tyrese Gibson had promised that this would be a very emotional send-off to Paul Walker, and that it would bring a tear to every eye in the house. And he was right. It brought a lot of tears to my eyes. Uh, I was really, really touched and moved with the send-off they gave him. They had the usual montage of him throughout the franchise, which you would expect, but I thought it was really beautiful how they had him playing with his family, you know, his family in the movie, Brian O'Connor's family, on the beach. Uh, and you know, this was one of the scenes where you could tell that it, you know, it wasn't actually Paul Walker there, uh, but they did a good job of you know, not making that too obvious. And you had the whole rest of the cast sitting there watching him, you know, saying this is where he belonged. And you know, it even te tears me up now. It was just so emotional, because you knew that they were actually saying goodbye to him. And so that was amazing. And then Vin Diesel gets up and he says, you know, I'm not actually going to say goodbye to him. And you're like, okay, that's a really good way to go. Like, we don't want to say goodbye to Paul Walker either. And so he drives off, and you're like, oh, what's going to happen? Is there going to be like an end credit sequence where they tease the next movie? Uh, and then instead, Paul Walker drives up. And this, this was what really made it sad, is that it was clearly digital Paul Walker. And the fact that Paul Walker couldn't do, I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was like, oh, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be able to convey the emotional aspects of this when I review it, you know, when I was leaving the theater. And, you know, darn it, just thinking about it is so sad. And you're like, well, Paul Walker couldn't film this scene because he had died. But how great that they were able to put in, like, this ghost of Paul Walker. It really felt like uh, Vin Diesel was look, talking to a ghost. And then, um, just to make it even sadder, but more more wonderful, you know, Paul Walker says, um, you, you couldn't think you could leave without saying goodbye, right? And it's like us saying goodbye. This is so ridiculous, I'm sorry. And then they drive, and then Paul Walker's white car, like, just goes off into the, you know, it takes a side road and goes off on its own. I'm sorry. And it was just really beautiful. Oh, how ridiculous. Ah, oh, okay, so it was just, oh, so amazing. Uh, and so he drove off into the sunset, and it was just so beautiful and perfect. But the great thing is, and I touched on this in my non-spoiler review, was that this was just also a great, a great role for Paul Walker throughout. He, he was just such a big part of this movie. I mean, oftentimes, I don't know about you, when I watched other Fast and Furious films, I was like, oh, you know, what's Paul Walker doing in here? He's not that great an actor. He doesn't bring anything to the table. And I guess that also makes it really sad that he'd grown so much as an actor, that he was also able to have the great character development scenes in the film, and that he did such a great job in his action scenes. Although I think in some places it was his brother standing in for him. Although I believe one of his brothers is a stunt guy. So um, it was just such a fully realized movie for Brian O'Connor that it's, it's really sad that he'll never be able to, to do it again. But at least, as I said again in my non-spoiler review, this was a great gift to be able to allow him to complete the film. Uh, so he, uh, I love the great character development moment. You know, it was had to be broad strokes because there are so many characters they have to discuss. But I love the mini fan joke. The mini fan joke at the beginning of the movie killed. I, well, that's a horrible choice of words, but it was fantastic. It was really good. And then the action sequences. He had some of the best action action sequences in the movie. So that's what I want to move uh, on to now. We'll discuss the action. Sorry, trying to regain my composure after crying so hard in a review. I don't think I've ever done that before. 
Um, all right, so let's start out with the action. Let's start out with Paul Walker's, because he had, the, as I said, some of the best action sequences in the movie. And they were opposite Tony Jaw. I couldn't believe I didn't re re realize that this was Tony Jaw's character from the trailer, because we saw him, you know, in that great shot in the bus when they blow off the back, and that guy, that guy in the black camo kind of like flips himself, and you realize, you're like, of course that's Tony Jaw. Only Tony Jaw can flip like that and, you know, really sell this, uh, you know, this explosion. And he does. And Tony Jaw really pops in the film. You know, they've had actors from other countries before in these movies, like they had that guy from The Raid uh, in the last film, but he didn't have a lot to do. Uh, he had like one kind of action sequence, but Tony Jaw, I think, is utilized really well here. So when Paul Walker first has to fight Tony Jaw, you're like, what are you, crazy, Paul Walker? That's Tony Jaw. But of course, Paul Walker's character, Brian O'Connor, doesn't know he's fighting Thai action star Tony Jaw. But I think that the scenes were choreographed to the point where they felt like, Paul Walker was reasonably holding his own. So the first great sequence they have, the great fight they have, is on that bus. Really action-packed, really exciting, which is, of course, part of a much larger action piece, which we'll get to momentarily. But I thought that that scene in the bus alone was really well done. And the way Paul Walker had to climb out of the bus, it was so scary. And it, I thought it was great. And when he climbed up and ran over the bus, as we've seen in the in the trailer, but there's so much more to the scene. The trailer doesn't ruin it, believe it or not. Uh, and actually, when he was running up the top of the bus, someone in the theater laughed. And I took a little offense at it, actually, because I didn't think they were laughing in the way of, like, that's so awesome. I thought they laughed and like, oh, that's so ridiculous. And I talked about that also in my non-spoiler review, but I kind of didn't like the attitude of some of the press people at the screening that I was at, that they kind of were like disdainful of the film. It really kind of bothered me a lot. So again, I'm curious, as I asked in the non-spoiler review, what the reaction to this movie is in the theater that you attend. Then the other great sequence was that fight with Tony Jaw in like that abandoned warehouse or whatever, or factory, whatever they were in. Like, th when he had to run up the stairs at first, I was like, that's a lot of stairs, Paul Walker, you're really earning this action sequence. But then when Tony Jaw tackled him, and they fought, and they landed, th they crashed through the door, and then the door was like a sled down the stairs, and like it was jumping, and they were in danger of hitting their head on the on the um, door, door frames of the stairwell. That was brilliant. I was like, I've never seen that before. I can't believe nobody ever thought of that. That's so cool. It was just, it was like really fast. It was quick little bit of the scene, but it was fantastically well done. And then, of course, Paul Walker's revenge on Tony Jaw was also excellent. So I thought that was great. Uh, then the other fight sequences. We've got Statham versus Dwayne Johnson. That was great. Oh, the fights, the punches, the blows. I mean, that, that was the one fight that I think they showed maybe perhaps a little bit too much in the trailer, or actually there wasn't that much fight to really reveal. It happens very quickly. But the, the build-up to it is really amazing. You're like, this is going to happen. I can't believe they're actually going to fight. And that was really cool. So that was also a very good fight. And you could, you know, again, you know, flying fists of fury. Like, these fights felt like they hurt. There was like a real element of danger. And we'll talk about danger more with Jason Statham, but there was danger throughout this movie. This was a film where characters were legitimately in danger. You felt it and they felt it. And I liked adding that to the franchise. Then there was also Statham versus Diesel. Now that, they kind of had a mini standoff earlier in the film, but their big fight in the, in the parking garage at the end of the movie, that was intense. Uh, and I was impressed that Vin Diesel was able to hold his own against Jason Statham. And that Statham did a really good job you know, with the choreography there and sold it that Vin Diesel could hold his own against Jason Statham. Because I don't think he can in real life. I think Dwayne Johnson can, but not Vin Diesel. But it looked like he could. And again, they had these, you know, these really metal pipes that they were swinging at each other and it looked like it hurt. Uh, although, I have to say, I was, I was like, how can you not shoot Jason Statham, Vin Diesel? That's ridiculous. That guy is much more skilled than you. You should totally shoot him. But then we wouldn't have a movie or a potential, you know, follow-up with Jason Statham. I'm so glad his character stuck around around uh, for the future. So they couldn't do that. But it was the one point in the movie where you were just like, it took you out of it for a second because you were like, oh, that's such a movie cliche. Just shoot him, as Indiana Jones would do. Then the other fight, uh, Ronda Rousey versus Michelle Rodriguez. This was also very good. It also looked like it hurt. And I like the build-up to it as well. And they're like, oh, there's his bodyguards. And you see Ronda Rousey, and you're like, oh, it's going to go down. And I think Ronda Rousey is... You know, she's not by any means a great actress, but I think she's better than Gina Carano, and I think she could potentially do pretty good things in Hollywood. Uh, I think she has some potential, whereas Gina Carano never really could, could, could make it. But I think Ronda Rousey, what I've seen her do so far in The Expendables 3 and then now here, she's pretty good, and she was well utilized here. Uh, and I think that she and Michelle Rodriguez had a genuinely good fight, uh, where they both actually really hurt themselves, and I appreciated that as well. You know, people, they, this, these fights look like they hurt, and they did hurt. 
Uh, then uh, the best action sequences. This is a tie. The bus, you know, the bus hole, you know, the, when they rescue the hacker, uh, Ramsey, that was very good. I thought that sequence from the beginning to the end was spectacular. And it just kept getting better and better. They kept raising the stakes higher and higher. And they had so much great comedy in it in the beginning. The parachuting cars, oh man, you think that would be ruined in the trailer? It was not. Just the visual aspect of it, of these cars hurtling through the, the, through the sky, was really well done. And then the Tyrese Gibson stuff was hilarious. When he was just like floating past them, unable to land, that was great. And um, they did it just really, just really, really well. And then the whole way that the whole situation escalated with Jason Statham's character showing up, that was just really, just really well done. And it tied, I think, with the Dubai party. Uh, now the Dubai party was uh, another great action sequence where so much stuff was happening, but the reason it ended up tying was the way they jumped the car from not just one building, but two buildings. That's what they saved for the movie. You think, oh, you ruined it in the trailer. They did not. And that was also really well handled. And they also didn't let you know that Paul Walker was in that scene as well. So I thought that was excellent. And I like that they added the commentary at the end where Vin Diesel was like, still miss the bullets because their lives were genuinely in danger. And there was a real danger that they wouldn't go home to the families they love so much. So I liked that quite a bit. And I also just liked how it underscored that this group of like, you know, Thieves and street criminals and, you know, car racers uh, had, had moved, climbed their way up, unintentionally so, to the highest ranks of criminal activity. And, you know, they were able to take it, but it was something, it was a height that maybe they were a little uncomfortable with. And I liked that aspect of the movie, that maybe they didn't want to operate at that level. I thought that was really well done. Now, the action sequences, as I said, have a lot going on in them. And the ability for the, for the movie to juggle these action sequences in a way that not only the movie understood what was going on and kept track of it, but that we could keep track of it, is really to James Wan's credit. And he's who I want to discuss next. I think James Wan does a spectacular job here. I think he does a good job juggling so many different characters and things happening at once. I think he does a great job with the camera work. Very inventive camera work. You know, a lot of times action directors will just not get in the way of the action or they'll just allow it to unfold in front of you. Not to say there aren't great other great action directors. There are. But what I liked about what James Wan did is he got in there. He had the camera almost get into the fight. And like the camera was like excited. The camera was like, wow, you think this scene is good? Wait until I show it to you from this angle. And also James Swan was very good at building up anticipation for fight sequences and characters by going to slow motion or the great way he would do a pan or a character reveal. I thought that was really, really well done. James Wan, you know, really actively wanted to participate in this movie from behind the camera. And he does. He does so well. I don't know if there's anything James Wan can't do. I'm a huge James Wan fan. I really was, you know, rooting for him with this film, and I'm so glad that he delivered and that I can continue to say, James Wan can do anything. Uh, and so also the music was very well utilized here. One of the great aspects of driving is when you're listening to music, that the music was very well used, uh, particularly at the beginning of the movie. I thought they really did a great job there. Uh, and then also something else that was interesting was they had a lot of uh, Asian actors in the film. And I don't know if that's James Wan's influence because he hasn't really done that in his horror work or perhaps that the film was financed by, you know, a, a Chinese uh, film company. So perhaps they were like, could you please add some more Asian characters so that this can play increasingly well in China? And, you know, why not? I think this movie was very diverse overall, which was really nice to see. The Fast and Furious movies have always been diverse, but they've reached like a new level of diversity because uh, they had the Middle East in there as well. Like everybody came out to play and it was really, really nice. And I'm curious to see how it benefits this film at the box office. Uh, now next, of course, we have to talk about Vin Diesel. He produces these movies, he's a big part of this franchise, he's a driving force behind it, uh, and he's the lead character. I have to say, though, at the beginning of the movie, when they went to Race Wars, he was looking a little bit older. I was like, Vin Diesel, you might have aged out of this, this group of people. Uh, like, when he was having his scenes with Kurt Russell and the usual uh, cast members, it played much better. And I think this was a great example of how if an actor puts himself uh, next to people who are significantly younger than them, they look much older than they would look if they were with their peers, because otherwise Vin Diesel looked fantastic. Uh, so that was just a little bit of a blip that he should have been a little bit more aware of, I think, when he was, you know, making the movie. Because again, he is a producer. He can be like, get some older characters in here. Although I did like seeing Izzy, uh, Iggy Azalea, Iggy Azalea step in for a quick cameo. She did a nice job. 
But I think Vin Diesel does a great job here. He has some acting to do, lots of character development in this movie, uh, and he has great action sequences. He handles them well. As I said, he holds his own. He holds his own against op uh, opposite Jason Statham, uh, and then also he holds his own in the dramatic sequences with Michelle Rodriguez. I really loved it. In fact, the work done with their characters, I want my Don and Lenny movie. I think they're ready for it. I think the franchise is ready for it, and I think the audience would be ready for it at this point. Just really, really well done. Uh, and then again, also, as I said, they kind of turn these characters into the Avengers. And I liked uh, the way that Vin Diesel's character now, because, you know, what they get is they get the uh, the immunity that the Avengers would get by working with the government. They get the toys uh, and they also get the information to go and do the do what they do best, which is spectacular action sequences in these heists. Um, so that means I want to talk about Kurt Russell next, who is the Nick Fury of this franchise. And he's really good. At first, for a moment, when he first came out of that car and he was like, I'm Mr. Nobody, I was like, I don't know if you can pull this off, Kurt Russell. This seems impossible. But he does. He does a great job with it. And the moment that sold me is in that warehouse uh, in Dubai where they corner Jason Statham, and his sunglasses turn out to be night vision goggles as well. I was like, oh, that's so perfect. I love it. Kurt Russell just was great. And I'm excited to see him return, as I think he will, for a future installments. He's just a great choice. Of course, he's Snake Pilsen. I think he brings that to his role here. You know, he's very aware of his own past as an actor and what he's supposed to bring to this franchise. And he's a great person for Vin Diesel to interact with. I really like their conversations uh, about beer. I thought they handled it really well. They called, they did a few callbacks to that and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a groaner when they did. You were like, ah, yes, the beer discussion. It must continue. Who will win? Will Vin Diesel try the Belgian beer in the next entry? He's gotta. And then Kurt Russell can drink a Corona. Although sometimes the product placement in this movie was crazy. Uh, but I liked Kurt Russell a lot. Very well done work. Very, very good work from him here. Uh, then next, Michelle Rodriguez. Arletty. You know, you forget how good an actress Michelle Rodriguez is. I wouldn't say she's like an Oscar-winning spectacular actress, but you know, she came from Girl Fight. She she was she made her name for herself, not just with action, but by being a good actress. And I think that it underscores just how few, you know, really dramatic so, solid roles are out there for Latina actresses, which is a shame. And that also she got pigeonholed in the action genre because while she's very good at action, she's good at the dramatic scenes here. You really feel Letty's pain, uh, you know, with not remembering her past. It comes back to her a little too conveniently, uh, but you know what? It's an action movie. You know, they're doing the best they can with the character development. You got to go easy on them. And I think Michelle Rodriguez really sells her scenes, particularly in the graveyard. Uh, that was really well done. And also in Race Wars, the beginning when she kind of freaks out a little bit. She's very good here. And again, as I said, I want that Dom and Letty movie. Their conversation in the elevator at the Dubai party, very briefly, that was great. I mean, you really felt they were a couple and you felt the love and you were like, I would follow you guys for a very long time as characters. Even if, you know, you could, you know, Hollywood might feel you've aged out of this, I don't think you'll ever age out of this franchise. I think they could play Dom and Letty forever. Uh, they're just so good at it. Uh, and so next, and also by the way, I want to point out, it's great to have a really strong female role in the franchise uh, with the group. Like when they were at Kurt Russell's headquarters and they're like, oh, now your team is finally assembled when Letty shows up. I was like, yes, it is. Thank you for adding a woman to the mix. You know, it's uh, there are a lot of female fans for this franchise and just action movies in general these days. And we want to play too. And I think Michelle R Rodriguez is a great proxy for the female members of the audience because she's not there to just try and be the eye candy, uh, but she's not there being like, move over boys, I'll show you how it's done. She's just a member of the team and I think that's what we always like to see and why Black Widow is so popular, etc. Alright, so next, Dwayne Johnson. As I said, so cheesy in this movie. Some of the lines he says, I'm like, how do you do it with a straight face, Johnson? You're worth, you know, you're worth every penny they pay you. Because some of these lines are ridiculous. But you know what else is ridiculous? how big he is in this movie. Like when he comes out to give um, uh, Chris Hemsworth's wife, that's his partner by the way, that's Chris Hemsworth's wife, when he comes out to give her that recommendation letter at the beginning of the movie, you're like, you're just so big, Dwayne Johnson, to the point where you're like, maybe someone should pull him aside and like, please tell me you're doing this in a healthy way. Because I don't know how people can get this big. You're ginormous. I also thought it was funny they kind of had a commentary on how he sweats in the movie all the time. Like he's introduced with a towel around his shoulders. I was like, why are you always so sweaty in these movies, Dwayne Johnson? And then also he had the big sweat stain on his shirt. I was like, change your shirt, Dwayne Johnson. I thought the towel was funny. I thought the shirt was a step too far. Uh, but he was great. He was really good. He did a great job in his action sequences. He sold those cheesy lines. And I think he's a great 
uh, member of the franchise, even if he is like the one cartoon element that they have here. Everything else seems kind of in the vein of normal, but when he comes on, like I thought it was funny they had him watching the Hulk, because when he's sitting in that hospital bed, I don't know how they had a hospital bed big enough for him. He was just so big, and of course he's rocking it shirtless, and he's got that big gun on his table next to his jello, you know, his little hospital table, and you're like, man, you're awesome, Dwayne Johnson, you know, I'm glad that you've just accepted and basked in the glow of, you know, who you are in the movies. So that was very well done. Oh, by the way, I wanted to ask you, what do you think was the cheesiest line he had in the movie? I'm very curious to see what gets the most votes down below in the comments. Uh, then uh, Tyrese Gibson, really funny here. You know, when Tyrese Gibson was getting all these movie deals, like he just uh, Universal just picked up a, a script that he co-wrote about him being a border patrol agent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll talk about that in my coverage for Furious Eight potentially. Uh, but I was like, why would anybody buy anything from Tyrese Gibson? And when Elsley wanted to be Green Lantern, we were all like, that's ridiculous. Get away from the DC franchise, Tyrese Gibson. But here, he's pretty good. I think he really brings a lot to this franchise in terms of humor, and he doesn't, you know, not in a stupid way. Like he's legitimately the funny guy on the team. He was. Great. You know, at one point, Ramsey says, oh, he's the joker of the group, and he totally is. She pegs the group really well. And everybody does their job spectacularly, including Tyree Skipson. Then Ludacris, I think it's funny, ever since, you know, I, I watch Fred Claus every year, the Vince Vaughn Christmas movie. Great movie. I wish it had done better in theaters. If you've never seen it, it's really good. It's a great commentary on naughty kids and also relationships between siblings. But anyway, Tyre I mean, uh, Ludacris plays a, an elf in that movie. And so he's shorter than all of his co-stars here. So I keep thinking of like that uh, weird amalgam they created for Fred Claus where they superimposed his face on like an elf body. And so every time I see him, I'm like, oh, that's, you know, I'm thinking of Fred Claus. So I can't quite see him ever the same way. But he's very good here. And I liked him having a love interest. I thought that was great. And I thought that the actress they chose, that's uh, Daenerys' handmaiden from Game of Thrones, by the way, I thought she did a nice job. But uh, I think if she, I don't see how she can evolve beyond being his love interest, because he's their resident hacker. So if you can't have two hackers unless they're like a couple, uh, you know, like a romantic couple, hack, couple hackers, uh, because otherwise they're repetitive of each other. So I'm not quite sure how that'll work going forward, but I like Ludacris here uh, uh, quite a bit. Then finally, Jason Statham. So good. I love him as a villain. I think he's so well utilized here. I thought it was very inventive how they introduced him at the beginning of the movie. That we saw, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the results of his rampage on the hospital. Uh, you know, revealed what he'd done. Like, at first it seems like a very, uh, you know, standard visit to the hospital to see his brother. And I'm surprised that Luke Evans' character is still potentially alive. Perhaps he'll team up with Statham in a future film. But I like that he threatened the doctors and then you see the the destruction that he wrought on his way in. So that, that was a great way to introduce the character. And I thought Statham sold it that this was a one-man army, that when he showed up, a lot of damage was going to happen. And again, as I said throughout this review, it really introduced a strong element of legitimate danger into the entire film. And they've never had a really strong villain in this franchise before, and it was so great to see them find one in Statham. And I'm so excited for them to be able to bring him back. I'm so glad they put him in that prison. It can't hold him. We all know it. We don't want it to hold him. And perhaps uh, the beginning of the next movie, whoever is in it, uh, if it focuses on Dwayne Johnson or Dom and Letty, will feature Jason Statham breaking out of that cell. And will The Rock really be waiting there for him with his fist in a body bag? That's one of the contenders for cheesiest line in the film. But Statham was really spectacular. I love the work that he did here. So that's my spoiler review of Furious 7. I'm very curious to see what you guys think of the movie. Uh, again, this is the spoiler review, so you can say anything you want in the comments. Don't worry about ruining it for anybody, because they know this is the spoiler review. Uh, and uh, I'm very curious who your favorite character was, where you see, where you want to see the franchise go, what do you think of, what do you thought of James Wan's directing, etc. Uh, I think we have a lot to discuss. And of course, what did you think was the best action sequence, and how you felt about how they handled Paul Walker? All right, thank you so much for tuning in, uh, and you can check out some other episodes right now.